Hi mga kajosa rap, this is Chrissy. I'm your hap kajosa at hap sarap na trans nene. Joke lang po. What we will be talking about today is all about the signs and symptoms, the complications, and the body changes that is happening while taking the hormones replacement therapy. So, ano ba yung mga hormones replacement therapy na ginagamit natin? We have the synthetic hormones. Most probably, these are hormones that is used for contraceptive. We have also the bioidentical HRT and also the phytoestrogen. So, generally speaking, lahat po ito magkakaparehas lang po ang kanilang signs and symptoms, uh, complications, and uh, the body changes that is happening kapag tinake nyo po ito. So, hindi porket synthetic ang tinitake mo or bioidentical HRT ang tinitake mo, hindi mo na mararanasan ang mga, ang mga symptoms at mga complications. So, lahat po ito, HRT, are all risky in nature. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's start the topic. So, being an admin of a trans group po, I am always confronted with this question po. Palag, mala, maraming beses ko na po itong nababasa sa mga posts ng mga trans group. Ang mga katanungan is, ano ba ang effect ng dayan? Ano ba ang effect ng progenova, ano ba effect ng pelanin, ano ba ang effect ng pinokinon. Okay? To tell you honestly, magkakaparehas lang po ang, e ang effect ni ng mga to. Okay? When we are talking about effect, okay, meron pong dalawa. Positive effect and the negative effect po. Okay? Most probably, the positive effect, we are talking about the feminization uh, experience or the feminization side effect of HRT. And also, the negative effect, uh, uh, yun na yung mga complications, yun na yung mga side effects, ay mga pagbabago na nararamdaman natin. So, stay tuned mga, uh, mga kajosarap, and we will be talking uh, these signs and symptoms, complications, one by one po. Okay? Para maintindihan nyo yung mga pagbabago sa inyo, mga side effect and the complication. Kasi, uh, palagi kong na nakikita or na babasa or naririnig sa mga transgender ang alam lang nila is the positive effect ng uh, ng HRT po okay yun lang alam ng mga which is so sad kasi nga yun lang yung alam nila kung paano maging babaihan okay they don't really know what are the side effects the complications and ano yung mga changes yung mga risk na pwede nilang um my experience during HRT lang isang nurse I, I will present the reality what is the negative and the positive effect so that you will be learned you will be educated that this HRT are risky in nature so mga kajosara before I will be enumerating or discussing one by one yung mga signs and symptoms complications and body changes I will give you a brief pathophysiology nangyayari sa katawan natin kung bakit ba may pagbabago sa ating katawan natin okay this pathophysiology will give us a, a brief description kung pa uh, kung bakit nagkakaroon ng pagbabago sa ating katawan dahil dito po okay during taking of HRT po okay ng isang ng isang trans woman po bina, meaning binabago po natin yung hormones ng ating katawan okay from male hormones to female hormones. Sinusuppress natin yung male hormones at binabago natin into the female hormones kasi gusto nating maging babaihan. Okay? But during the process po, okay, hindi po natin na maiiwasan na maka-encounter ng hormonal imbalance. When there is an erratic hormonal changes po, our body is confronted with the stress po. And it will trigger yung adrenal glands natin to release cortisol. Ano ba yung cortisol natin? Cortisol po, ito yung uh, ho uh, stress hormones. Okay? When you are confronted with the stress, ito pong, ito pong cortisol ay na-activate po. For example, may sunog. Okay? Ma-activate yung cortisol mo, magiging alert ka, 
mabubuhat mo yung yung refrigerator ng nakit ng mag-isa mo lang. Okay? So, yun po uh, during the fight and flight ng ating body, okay? Tumataas po yung cortisol natin. And at the same time when we are conf- uh, when when our hormones is uh, erratically changing, tayo po ay nagki-create o tumataas po palagi yung ating cortisol. Lalo na po at we are uh, lalo na kung we are using HRT for a long-term basis. So long-term din po ta- yung exposure natin sa cortisol and Long-term exposure to cortisol will give us body changes po, complications and side effects. Acne, body weight, uh, weight gain, muscle weakness, uh, yung pagtaas ng blood sugar, yung thinning of the skin, then headache, irritability, severe fatigue, and so on. Okay? So, ano ba yung ginag- ginagawa sa atin ng cortisol? Okay? Mahalaga ba ito? Yes, mahalaga po ang cortisol natin during the stress period po. Ang cortisol po ay siya po ay nagre-regulate ng glucose natin, memory formulation, the metabolism regulation, and inflammation reduction po. So, yan po yung ginagawa ng cortisol natin. Kaya mahalaga ito. But, the cortisol must be uh, acute lang dapat. Okay? Meaning ng acute is hindi dapat long-term yung exposure natin sa Uh, sa cortisol. But then, we are a transgender, we are using tra- uh, hormones replacement therapy. This is tantamount to a long-term exposure to cortisol. So, yun, yun po yung uh, negative na, na nangyayari sa atin. So, let's proceed to the topic which is the signs and symptoms, the complications, and body changes. While taking HRT po, I will be enumerating one by one kung ano ito and we'll discuss in simple term ang mga ito so that you will be you will understand po okay lahat po ito I will uh, enumerate all but it doesn't mean that you will encounter all of this while taking HRT okay it is a case to case basis po uh, depende lang po okay hindi ko po sinasabi lahat ng sasabihin ko ngayon ay mararanasan nyo okay Ididiscuss ko lang po sa inyo itong mga to para pag na-encounter nyo ang mga ito, okay, you will uh, say to yourself to na yung sinasabi na sign and symptoms, complications, and body changes while taking HRT po. Okay po, maliwanag po tayo dyan. Uh, yan nga mga kabeshi, let's proceed now. I will be talking by sequence po, by system na lang po tayo. Okay? The first one is physical muna tayo. Physical aspects. Physical Uh, changes na nangyayari sa atin. Okay? One is the feminization aura. Okay? Siyempre, most probably ito nga yung palaging laman ng utak ng isang transgender when we are taking the whole, uh, HRT. Ito lang po yung alam ng karamihan ng HRT ay nakakapagbabaihan ng katawan, ng face, and everything. So, tatanungin mo sila, yun lang po yung alam nila. Okay? They really don't know less likely na di nila alam yung mga negative effect. Okay? So, going back to the feminization aura, common sense, this is, these are all containing female hormones. So, from the word itself, female hormone, maging babaihan yung aura mo. Okay? Yung physical aspect mo magiging babaihan. Okay? So, whether it is, uh, whether it is Dayan, Micro, Marvelon, Froginova, Progeluton, Estrofem, pro, uh, ano pa, Ponokinon, Duetton, and everything. Okay, lahat po yan, in general po. Okay? Generally speaking, ito po ay, ay dinagamit ng mga transgender para maging babaihan po. Okay? To, to gain a feminization aura. Kahit anong gamitin nyo. Okay? Kaya sana wala na akong maririnig na ano ba ang effect ng ganito, ano ba ang effect ng ganyan. Kasi, Generally speaking, these are all used for feminization. So, the next is our skin. Okay? You will notice when you are uh, taking an HRT po that there is a glowing changes on your skin. Yung texture, yung tone is improved. Nagiging soft, nagiging firm. Nang brighten effect. 
and nakakakaroon ng reduce um, aging of the skin. Okay? It is because estrogen works well to strengthen the collagen and the elastin fiber of our skin. So the next is voluptuous body or yung pagtaba while taking HRT and the same time yung pagpayat Okay, it this is it depends to your body reaction po. Yung iba while taking HRT tumataba, yung iba while taking HRT is pumapayat. So it depends on the body reaction. Or the female hormones are used ng mga transgender as hormones replacement therapy. Hindi po ito ginagamit as a dietary supplement po. Hindi po ito pampataba, hindi po ito pampapayat. Ito yung pagpayat at pagtaba lang ay effect lang ng HRT. Bakit tumataba ang isang transgender? This is because of the fat deposition. Okay? And like what I've said, one of the the side effect pag hormonal changes sa katawan natin, tumataas yung cortisol natin. And pag tumaas yung cortisol natin, long term exposure to pagtaas ng cortisol, the stress hormone, nagkakaroon tayo ng body weight changes. Okay? Nagkakaroon tayo ng gain tayo ng weight. Yun po. So yung mga pagpayat naman That is the side, another side effect po ng HRT natin. Okay? Kakaroon ng pimples and um, acne while taking HRT. Okay? Some are experiencing this, some are not experiencing this uh, sign and symptoms po. Okay? Again, this is because of the increasing cortisol of your body because of the hormonal changes po. Okay? Sometimes, pimples and acne po ay nag i po ito sa mga first-timer po. Okay? Kasi, nag-introduce ka ng exogenous hormones o nag-introduce ka ng pagbabago sa inyong katawan by taking hormones. So, tendency ng iyong katawan is will react on these changes and trying to adapt. Okay? Kaya sa mga baguhan na nagtitake ng HRT at nakakaranas nito, most probably because of the hormonal changes and your body is adapting on the hormonal changes, okay, and later on, kapag naka-adapt na yung inyong uh, katawan, pwedeng mawala, pwedeng hindi naman mawala because pwedeng mawala dahil naka-adapt, pwedeng hindi mawala because of the increasing uh, cortisol exposure po. So, it affect the way your skin Uh, protect and, re- and regenerate yun po during your taking of HRT so ang inaano ko ina-advise ko is you just observe your skin or your yung pag- pagtubo ng mga pimples and acne during the first time that you take your hormones um, in- sinasuggest ko na i-observe nyo for at least 3 months kung tum- uh, na- kung nagkakaroon ba- ng kung nakaka-adapt ba yung, yung katawan mo sa changes or um, patuloy yung eruption ng pimples or acne. This will go along also with yung mga nag-switch ng hormones po. Okay, sinasabi ko palagi, kapag nag-switch ka na never kayo dapat palaging nag-switch ng, ng HRT because sometimes kapag nag-switch ka ng hormones, maninibago yung katawan mo, maninibago na naman yung adaptability ng horm- ng katawan mo sa isang hormones kaya nagkakaroon ng pagbabago sa homeostasis o yung nagbabago din yung reaction ng katawan mo kaya nagkakaroon ng pimples, acne, eruption. Yes, nagkakaroon po ng less oily ng skin nyo. This is because of the estrogen and the anti-androgen that you are taking. Okay? This estrogen and anti-androgen will directly act on the sebaceous gland po ng inyong skin po. So, na- nire-regulate ng nito yung oily skin po na kaya nagiging less oily ng inyong face po. But some others po is ano, uh, kabaliktaran, nagkakaroon ng more oily ng skin nyo. Okay? Because sometimes Iba-iba yung reaction ng katawan natin sa HRT. So, this will also fall under the hormonal changes of our body. Okay, but most probably, when you are taking the estrogen and anti-androgen, 
your uh, that will act on the sebaceous gland will result to the less oily ng ating skin. Ayun po. Next is abdominal fat, thigh fat, ano pa? Arm sa arms fat natin and sa pwet nagkakaroon ng fat. Okay? This is because of fat deposition. Okay? And also, also due to the increasing cortisol or the stress hormones ng katawan natin during the uh, during hormonal changes. So because nakakaroon ng weight gain. And while taking HRT po, you are also uh, experiencing fat deposition. Okay? So next is the night sweat. Since we are taking HRT and HRT is directly uh, affected yung endocrine system natin, mm -mm, nakaranas tayo ng night sweat. Okay? This is also due to hormonal changes po. Punta na tayo sa breast. Okay? So, possible po na magkaroon tayo ng breast augmentation or breast enlargement while taking HRT. Okay? Breast augmentation na nararanasan natin is because of the gynecomastia po. Nakakaranas po tayo ng imbalance between the hormones, mas mataas yung estrogen natin kaysa sa testosterone natin. So, possible po na magkaroon ng fat deposition sa breast natin. And the breast is one of na, naga, na may, mayroong mga estrogen receptor po ng high affinity ng estrogen. Kaya, uh, pwede pong magkaroon ng breast enlargement. Some other are hindi po sila tumuto, tinutubuan ng breast while taking HRT because one is maybe less yung kanilang estrogen receptor sa, sa breast. Two is because insensitive yung breast, uh, yung yung receptors nila, yung estrogen receptors. The third one is yung slow yung reaction ng kanilang estrogen receptors po. Kahit long term na silang nagtitik ng HRT, hindi pa po nagkakaroon ng uh, breast enlargement. Okay? Ito pa nga mga kasisi ko, sa mga trans dyan, okay, Hindi po sinabi na nag-take ka ng isang pad, dayan, eh magkakaroon ka kaagad ng, ng breast enlargement. Hindi po. Okay, patience is the virtue. So, maghintay lang po. Kasi may timeline ito. Okay, mostly, ang timeline ay ng pagtubo ng breast na, ng isang trans while taking HRT is within 6 months and above. Ganun po. Kung gusto ng instant breast enlargement, magpa augmentation surgery po. Okay. Para hindi ka na mag-worry kung liliit ba yung breast mo or, or tutubuan ka ba ng breast mo or hindi. The breast tenderness po. What do I mean about this is yung pagsakit ng boobs nyo. This is because your, um, your breast tissue react on the hormonal changes. And these hormonal changes will happen during the increasing of the, the estrogen on your body. Okay. Relate natin ito sa mga babae. At kapag malapit na yung period nila, sinasabi nila masakit yung breast nila. Okay? This is due to the increasing of the estrogen before yung period nila. So, ano naman ang relasyon nito sa, uh, sa, sa trans? Sa trans naman kasi, is nag, we are introducing exogenous estrogen. So, pinapataas natin yung estrogen natin. So, nagre-react yung, uh, yung breast tissue. So, nakakaroon ng pagsakit ng breast. And another thing is because of the fluid accumulation, fluid retention, kaya nagkakaroon ng breast tenderness. Po. Yun po yung uh, paliwanag doon. The darkening of the nipples po. So yes, this is due to hormonal changes then. So, i-relate naman natin ito sa mga pregnant woman po. Kung makikita nyo kapag yung pregnant woman during their pregnancy po yung yung nipples po nila is nagiging maitim po okay sobrang itim so this is because of the fluctuation of the hormones okay ganun din sa mga trans since we are introducing exogenous hormones po estrogen ganyan progesterone and everything so there if there is a fluctuation of the hormones of sa, sa body ng isang trans pwedeng mag-cause po ito ng pag 
itim ng nipples. The next is fibrocystic breast change. Most probably, lalo na mararanasan niyo to sa unang pagtitake ng HRT. Sa mga baguhan, mostly nararanasan ito. Yung sa middle ng inyong nipples, meron po doon matigas na parang uh, laman sa gitna na masakit. Okay, yun po yung tinatawag na fibrocystic breast chain. This is a benign or a, a non-cancerous condition in which uh, the breasts uh, feel the lumpy. Okay? You feel the, the, the breast na mayroong laman sa gitna. So, this is this is not harmful or dangerous for this is just because of the hormonal changes on your body. So, dip, ano po to? Um, Cancerous uh, na breast is different from this. Okay? Magka, magkaiba po. The fibrocystic breast change po ay pwedeng mawala during your hormones replacement therapy or pwede rin hindi mawala dahil nagtitake ka ng hormones. Okay? Eventually po, ma- mawawala rin po ito. Okay? Again, relate natin ito sa mga sa mga babae, sa mga biological na babae. Tanungin niyo po sila before sila mag Mag, uh, magkaroon ng menstruation, masakit po yung kanilang breast at may nakakapapo silang uh, laman sa loob. Okay, this is because during, uh, before the menstruation po, is mataas po yung yung estrogen nila, kaya nagkakaroon ng fibrocystic breast change. Pero, pag wala na po silang menstruation, nawawala din po ito. So, like what I've said, pwede pong, sa mga trans, pwedeng mawala ito, pwedeng hindi mawala. Okay? Another thing, mga skasisi ko, yung pisa-pisa issue. Tawa nga po ako dito. Sinasabi nila, pisa in daw yung, yung laman na yan para mawala. Hindi po, huwag nyo, huwag nyo na pong pisain. Okay? You just ignore it. Okay? Mawawala rin po yan. Kung mag i na kayo ng HRT or during your HRT, ma- mawawala rin po yan. Okay? So, ganun po ang nangyayari. So, wag nyo nang pisa-pisain. Sinasaktan nyo lang yung breast nyo. Sinasaktan nyo lang yung sarili nyo. Just ignore it. So, the next is galactoria. Ano ba yung galactoria? May lumalabas na fluid sa suso natin while taking HRT. In medical term, ito pa tinatawag na galactoria. This is a hormone side effect affecting the pituitary glands. Okay? In- that increases the prolactin sa katawan natin. Kaya nag-stimulate ng milk production. Okay? So, mawawala rin ba ito? Yes, mawawala rin po yan. Once na, na nagtumigil ka sa, uh, ng, sa pag-HRT or during the, kapag bumaba na yung prolactin mo sa katawan mo, pwedeng mawala po yan. So, pwede rin pong paulit-ulit na mangyayari. So, just expect this. Kung yung body mo is nag, nagpo-produce ng mataas na prolactin while taking HRT. So matatakot ba matatakot ba ako? Hindi wag po kayong matakot dahil this is just because of the hormonal changes on your body. It is because of your hormones. Okay? Iba naman po kasi yung uh, nagkakaroon ka ng lactation pero hindi ka nagti-take ng hormones. Okay? Meaning meaning noon pwedeng pwede tumor on the pituitary gland or something or there is an underlying circumstances po may ibang problema po. Okay? Sa in, sa trans po, this is because of yung pagtitake natin ng hormones. Okay? Uh, and also, okay, overstimulation ng breast natin, yung palagi yung pagmamassage ng 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 breast nyo, minamassage ng ng jowa nyo, yung breast nyo. Okay? This will also increases the prolactin on your body that will stimulate milk production po. Uh, let's proceed now to the mental aspect. When we are taking the HRT, we are also experiencing some erratic changes in our emotions or behaviors. And isa na po dito yung depression, anxiety, sadness, happiness in everything. Okay? It is because of the hormonal changes Okay, that is happening in our body that affecting the brain and the nervous system. Okay? In connection with the nervous system po, the neurotransmitter that regulates the, our mood, okay, is naaapektuhan po. Tulad ng dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, 
and also the norepinephrine po. This neurotransmitter is directly related to the mood that na na, na naaapektuhan during the hormonal changes. Okay? And also, uh, if there is an increase of estrogen, nakaroon ng sensitivity on our amygdala. Okay? Amygdala, ito po yung uh, nag-regulate din ng mood natin na matatagpuan sa brains po uh, sa ano po, sa medial temporal lobe. So since nagkakaroon ng ano po na to sensitivity sa amygdala due to the increasing of the estrogen kaya yung mood ng isang tao ay naapektuhan din. Okay? And and also the hippocampus po na na, matata, na isang part din sa is, ng ating brain na directly related to the mood is also link to the uh, to the sa pagbabago ng hormones natin. Okay? And also, this hippocampus po is responsible for the consolidation of the short-term memory and the long-term memory. So, meaning, kung ang isang trans po ay nagtitake po ng, ng HRT, then naapektuhan po yung hippocampus, which is siya nagko-consolidate ng short-term and long-term memory natin. Kaya, most ng mga trans woman po taking HRT ay nakaka experience po ng yun makakalimutin ganyan tapos na yung memorization okay naaapektuhan po so ano ba yung nararamdaman mo during yan mga magkakaroon ng depression sadness and everything okay meron um, yun uh, nagkakaroon ng sadness fatigue tapos problem sa thinking, concent- nagkakaroon din ng problem sa concentration or memory, feeling of guilt, worklessness, then problem sa sleep as well, irritability, restlessness, thought of death and suicide. Yun po yung nararamdaman kapag nagkakaroon ng depression, okay, or anxiety and everything. Okay? Minsan uh, tumataas po yung heart rate natin, yan. Okay? This is because of the increasing cortisol po too much exposure to the cor- uh, to the increasing cortisol hormones or the stress hormones increases the heart rate po kaya sinasabi niyo minsan nagkakaroon kayo ng anxiety attack nagkakaroon kayo uh, ju- then dahil nagkakaroon kayo ng palpitations mala at to mabilis yung tibok ng puso nyo. this is because of the increasing of the cortisol okay again cortisol these are the stress Hormone. So, yan mga kabeshi, let's proceed to the headache po. The, that is fall under the mental aspect po. Uh, during the, ano po, during taking of HRT, headache is also one of the signs and symptoms that we are experiencing. Okay? This is due to the hormonal imbalance. Okay? That influence the headache pattern. And also, HRT is related to hypertension. So, sa mga nag, nag-take ng HRT dyan, one of your intervention during uh, head ex- uh, headache experience po is wa- uh, is monitor your blood pressure okay pwedeng yung yung headache nyo is because of the increasing of the blood pressure po so yun po yun yung masasabi ko sa inyo lalo na sa mga long term long term na gumagamit ng HRT magpa BP po kayo when you are experiencing headache this is just to clear na hindi ito dahil sa pagtaas ng ng blood pressure nyo. Okay? Sa mga baguhan naman na nakaka-experience na pag sakit ng ulo, this is due to the hormonal changes. But, wag kayong magpakampante na hormonal changes lang ito. Okay? Better, monitor your BP. Okay? Check your blood pressure muna. Next is dizziness. Ang dizziness will also be uh, related sa pagtaas ng blood pressure. Kaya sinasabi ko sa inyo na magpa-blood pressure, uh, baka pwedeng sa, dahil sa mataas na blood pressure nyo, is nagkakaroon kayo ng paghihilo. Hormones in the body will also be directly affecting the blood circulation and the blood vessels. And if there is also an imbalance on your hormones, it will also be related to the vestibular disorder. Kaya nagkakaroon ng paghihilo. Or, ano ba yung vestibular natin? The vestibular po, vestibular po, ito po yung part ng sa ears natin 
na nag-regulate ng balance sa ating katawan. If there is an increasing of estrogen, it will lead to the decrease of the blood sugar in our body and also it causes this equilibrium in our body because of uh, because it affect the brains po. So, ayan mga kasisi ko. Okay, let's proceed to the gastrointestinal system po. Mostly nararanasan dito ng trans while taking HRT is yung gutumen or palakain, okay? Because HRT plays as an essential role in the appetite, sa eating behavior, and also sa energy metabolism. And also, the estra, uh, ang ano kasi, ang estrogen may tatlong metabolites. Estradiol, estron, and estroil. Yon. And the estradiol is actually the most involved sa paggutom, pagkagutom, and fullness ng um, isang nagtitake ng HRT. And also, HRT is directly affecting the hypothalamus where uh, where the satiety center is located. Kapag satiety, ano bang ang Tagalog ito, is yung um, pagkabusog ng isang tao. So, yun na nga mga kabeshi, minsan nararanasan din natin yung feeling of fullness. Yung kakain ka lang ng konti is feeling full ka na, feeling busog ka na agad due to the uh, hormonal changes that modifies the the hunger and uh, fullness hormones. Okay? When there is a fluctuations of these hormones na apektuhan din yung hormones natin sa pagiging busog natin. Okay, there are two hormones there, which is the ghrelin and also the the fullness satiety hormone CKK. Okay, if there is a fluctuation of the hormones, the ghrelin kapag mababa yung ghrelin, less yung yung high uh, yung pagkagu uh, less yung pagkagutom, less yung consume ng food natin. Okay, kapag mataas po yung estrogen, there is also an increasing uh, potency of the CKK hormones that will tantamount to feeling of fullness. Okay? Yun yung nagagawa ng dalawang hormones na yon. Huwag po kayong magtaka. Minsan, sabi nyo naman, ay konti lang yung kainin nyo, busog po kayo. Okay? It is because of uh, hormonal fluctuation that is directly affecting the full hunger and fullness hormones po. Okay? The next one is Siyempre, pagiging bloated ng isang ng trans. Okay? If there is an erratic hormonal changes, uh, it will encourage ano po, water retention and intestinal gas. Okay? While reduction of the bile can cause constipation and resulting in further bloatedness. Yun po. Okay. This one naman po is while taking HRT na nararanasan nyo po yung constipation. Okay? This is mo most probably because of the slow metabolism as well. Slow metabolism, if there is a hormonal disparity, it can slow down the metabolic rate, your the hunger state, your metabolism, and ability to to burn the fat. Uh, increasing cortisol exposure. Okay? Kaya nagkakaroon ng slow metabolism. That result to constipation, something like that, at pagtaba po, seya and vomiting. So, na eventually, nagre-result ito sa gastroesophageal reflux disease, o yung tinatawag na GERD. Okay? Since, um, the rationale behind this is because of the increasing cor uh, cortisol level in our, in our body. Okay? Since there is a hormonal changes again, that is, is very stressful in our body, yun, kaya nagkakaroon, ng serious impact, the, the stress that we are encountering ay may impact ito sa body acidity ng ating katawan, okay? Na nagre-resulta ng overproduction ng acidity sa ating stomach po. Yeah mga kasisi, let's proceed to the reproductive system. So, one of the visible experience ng isang trans while taking HRT is the suppression of libido or decreasing yung libog po. Okay? This is because one is naapektuhan po yung mga neurotransmitter natin 
that is responsible for the law uh, for the sex drive which is the serotonin the dopamine epinephrine and oxytocin po. okay then the next one is since we are also using anti-androgen we are also using the hrt the estrogen the progesterone that is directly suppressing the testosterone at, at alam naman natin ang is, testosterone is the driving hormones for sex low testosterone in our body will, uh, will reduce the stimulating nerve endings in the brain that will lead to the reduced sexual drive or erectile dysfunction po so kaya yun po yung nangyayari kaya, so next is yung pagliit po ng itlog Kaya makikita nyo to pag nag hrt kayo, lalo na sa mga long term na gumagamit ng, ng hormones na lumiit yung itlog nyo. Okay, you can see that. So, yung scrotum nyo is lumiit din. Okay, this is because HRT stop the production of the gonadotropin releasing hormones. Kapag na-stop yung gonadotropin releasing hormones, stop then yung luteinizing hormones. At kapag stop yung luteinizing hormones, stop din yung testosterone uh, hormones natin. So, kapag stop yung, yung testosterone natin, stop or decrease yung testosterone natin, it will lead to smaller tes- testicles po. Yung magiging, um, saan dito? Lumiit yung itlog po. Okay? Yun, sa evolution, ang isang parte na hindi ginagamit ay pwedeng lumiit. For example, yung it, yung kaya lumiit yung itlog is because hindi mo na ito ginagamit. There is a stop production. So, since there is a stop production of the hormone, the male hormones, syempre liliit yung itlog talaga. Kaya uh, kasi nga nag anti-androgen kayo, nag estrogen kayo, nagpo progesterone kayo. Kaya liliit talaga yan kasi there is a suppression of the male hormones. Uh, mostly also nakakaranas yung trans na kapag nagma-masturbate po is wala nang lumalabas or uh, or konti na lang po yung lumalabas na secretion. This is because of the suppression of the male hormones po. So, mostly din ng mga trans woman, kapag nag, 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 nagmamasturbate po, since long time na hindi sila magmasturbate, tapos magmamasturbate po sila, masakit. Kasi hindi mo ito ginagamit eh, tapos gagamitin mo. Na ihi kay ng ihi while taking HRT. This is because hormone replacement therapy is prone to develop urinary con- incontinence. Okay, meaning po nun is you won't be able to control the, the times when they when you urinate po. Hindi nyo na nako control yung pag ihi nyo. Okay, it is because of the hormone replacement therapy. Kaya ihi kayo ng ihi. Na experience yun din yon na pag umihi po kayo is very mapanghe. Okay, this is because of all the things of all the chemicals that we are taking yung mga ini-excrete nating mga hormones, mga glutathione, mga supplements, mga vitamins mo. Kaya nagiging mapanghi po, very mapanghi po yung ating iniihihi because of all these chemicals. That is also tantamount to na pwede tayong prone to develop kidney problem po because of all the substances that we are taking, yung marami tayong tinitake ng mga, ng mga chemicals po. Kaya po, ugaliing magpatingin ng kidney function test po. Because we are prone to develop kidney problems po. An example of this is the kidney stone. So, the next is liver uh, problem po. Okay, as we all know that liver is an organ that emulsifies the fat and also uh, remo- removing the toxicity in our body po. So, it plays an essential role po sa pag-hormones po. And this is also the binding, the affinity, or the metabolism of the hormones sa ating katawan. So, possible po na magkaroon tayo ng liver, liver problem, okay, while taking the, the HRT po. Maganda, uh, kaya dapat alagaan natin ng liver natin, we, will, we must do the, the liver function test regularly po. So, yun po, and isa sa example ng liver problem na pwede nating maranasan while taking HRT is the the cholesterol gallstone. This is because of the increasing hepatic secretion of uh, cho- uh, of the biliary cho- cholesterol po. Yoon. That leads to the increased cholesterol uh, saturation of the bile. Kaya, so let's proceed now to the hemat- hematology or cardiovascular 
uh, system po, hematology sa blood, and cardiovascular po is sa heart po. And one of the complications that we are encountering while taking HRT is tawag na hypertension po. Okay, dahil po, isa is because of the increasing um, cortisol or stress to stress hormone. Pangalawa po is because of the the hemoconcentration. Naglalapot po yung dugo. Uh, hemoconcentration causes the blood to lose the fluid po. And the and the the component of the the blood, including the cholesterol, will be concentrated po. Kaya nagkakaroon po ng paglalapot ng dugo, leading to the risk of developing blood clotting. Then the next one is varicose veins po. Most probably, ito yung mga maliliit, yung spider veins po. Okay? This is due to the hormonal imbalance or the erratic uh, hormonal changes causes the, the, the blood vessels to dilate and weaken yung one-way bulbs ng, ng ugat natin causing it to the pooling of the blood. Hindi nakakabalik agad yung, yung dugo natin. And also, because of the hemoconcentration, naglalapot po yung dugo, kaya mabagal po. Okay? Mabagal po yung pagbalik ng yung circulation po. Kaya, that would be also na nagkukos ng, ng pagkakaroon ng varicose veins. Then, also blood clotting. Okay? This is one of the complication then na, na, na pwedeng maranasan while taking uh, taking HRT. Blood clotting po. Kapag sinabi po ng blood clotting, ito po yung namumuo yung dugo. Pwedeng yung, pwedeng naka-stay lang, yung naka-stay lang, tinatawag niya thrombus. Kapag yung na-dislodge yung blood clotting at nasama sa blood circulation, ito na yung tinatawag na emboli. Okay? Kaya, minsan pinagsasama, uh, thrombus, em, uh, thrombus emboli. Okay. Blood clotting. Okay? So, depende po, yung sign and symptoms po ng blood clotting, in relation to the HRT po, depende po yan kung saan po tatama yung blood clotting. For, for example, uh, yung blood clotting pumunta sa, sa sa brains natin. Okay? So, yun po. This one will result to stroke. Okay? Kasi ipablock yung yung circulation ng dugo sa, sa brain natin. Pwede rin yung, yung blood clotting ay pumunta sa lungs natin, which is yung tinatawag na Tro, uh, pulmonary embolism. Okay? Then, kapag inaman ito ay pumunta sa mga uh, sa mga sa paa natin, sa ankle, ganyan, ito ay pwedeng tina, uh, pwede nating tawagin itong uh, deep vein thrombosis. So, yun mga kasisi. Don't worry, I will be having a deep discussion about the, the blood clotting sa susunod na blog po. So, yun lang po yung pinaka-preview ng blood clotting. And also, but nagkakaroon ng blood clotting because of also the hemoconcentration. Okay? Hemoconcentration is causes the blood to lose the fluid and the content of the fluid is concentrated including the the, the cholesterol. So yun, kaya nagkakaroon ng paglapot na dugo po. So yung we can relate also the bruising. Okay? Yung pag nag nag HRT ka, madali ka pong magkaroon ng pasa. Okay? Dahil po sa pagtaas po ng cortisol level. Then, also, dahil sa pagtaas ng cortisol mo, this is also um, a cause po ng pagkakaroon ng stretch marks. Then, and also stretch marks is also related to the weight of the, uh, the weight ng isang trans from payat to mataba, mataba to, to uh, mapayat. Yun po. If there are changes in the weight, then you can develop stretch marks. So, yun po ang nangyayari doon. And also, hormones is also related. Uh, estrogen is also related to the, the, developing, the developing of the stretch marks. Okay? Tignan nyo po yung mga buntis po. Nakakaroon po sila ng stretch marks during uh, nanganganak po sila because of the hormones related po. Okay? Increasing of the estrogen. So, yung mga kad uh, kadyosara proceed na tayo sa endocrine system natin which is during the taking of HRT tumata tumataas po ang cholesterol po natin. It is because of the increasing co uh, cortisol exposure ng ating katawan during nagkakaroon tayo ng hormonal imbalance po which is so stressful sa ating katawan. As we all know that cholesterol uh, 
ito po ay nag-re-release ng glucose and fatty acid sa muscle and blood vessels natin. Since there is a prolonged exposure to cholesterol po, so prolonged din po yung pag-re-release ng fatty acid sa sa blood natin and sa muscles natin. Okay? So, yun nga po. Kaya nga po yung mga yung katawan natin, kapag nagtitake ng hormones po, yung mga muscle-muscle po natin, is nagkakaroon, nagiging soft. Kasi po, fat deposition. Ito yung because of the cortisol, nagre-release sa muscles natin. Okay? Kaya minsan, yung muscular, nagiging plubby arms, ganun po. So, nagiging soft po yung katawan natin. So, the next is increase of blood sugar. That is tantamount or that, is, that will result to diabetes. Okay? Since cortisol po ay nag, nagsisecrete po ng glucose sa blood and sa muscles natin by tapping the protein on our body through gluconeogenesis uh, in the liver. Kaya, kaya na, pwedeng magkaroon ng mataas na glucose level since we are exposing ourselves to a long-term increasing of cortisol po. So, long-term exposure to high level of cortisol, syempre mataas din, ang, ay palagi din itong nagpuproduce ng mataas na glucose sa katawan natin and also the fatty acid. Increasing of triglyceride po. Okay, bakit nagkakaroon? It is because of the increasing uh, production of cortisol hormones po, the stress hormones. Tapos long-term exposure pa tayo sa, sa cortisol po, kaya nagkakaroon ng increased triglycerides. Okay, increasing uh, cortisol uh, produces increased LDL, ito yung bad cholesterol po. Ito yung tinatawag na low-density lipoproteins po. Nag-HRT uh, po tayo, nagkakaroon po ng psychological stress po. Okay? Kapag meron po kayo, uh, kapag nagkaroon po kayo ng psychological stress, tumataas po yung triglyceride, tumataas po yung uh, low-density lipoproteins or yung yung bad cholesterol at bumababa po yung, yung HDL, yung high-density lipoproteins o yung good cholesterol. So, pwede, uh, then... Kapag mataas itong dalawang to, mataas yung LDL mo, triglycerides mo, then mataas, tumataas din po yung cholesterol po. So, yun po. Then, kasama na rin dito sa endocrine system, sa endocrine system kapag nag HRT ka, ay magkakaroon ka ng hormonal imbalance po. Okay, na kanina ko pa sinasabi, this is the root of all the side effects, the complications that we are experiencing. Taking HRT po, pwede po, pwede pong bumaba yung immune system natin. This is because of the high cortisol na nararanasan natin during the hormonal changes po. Okay? When the immune system is uh, becoming resistant sa cortisol and there is an accumulation of the stress hormones po sa katawan natin, there is also an increasing accumulation of uh, inflammatory cytokines that will lead to the compromised uh, immune system po. The next is uh, allergy po. Okay, estrogen exacerbate allergic reaction po. And again, this is also because of the hormonal changes that is happening in our body. Estrogen enhances the swelling and also the dilation of the, the blood vessels po associated to the, syn the synthesis and anaphylaxis because of the increased activity of endothelial nitric oxide po. Okay? Kaya po yung mga uh, katrans natin dyan na palaging na-experience na ng allergic reaction po, like yung urticaria, okay, mostly po because of the increasing estrogen in our body. Okay? Yun po yung sagot dyan. Kaya once you are uh, taking hormones po, expect this allergic reaction will be happening because it will, agri uh, it will exacerbate anaphylaxis reaction po. Okay? Kaya sinasabi ko minsan is mag-take na lang ng antihistamine po. This is to relieve the allergic reaction po. Okay, next one is autotoxicity. This is a complications 
were were in the were in nagkakaroon ng accumulation of toxins sa ating katawan na nakakaapekto po sa pandinig natin. Okay, most probably yung mga nag-overdose po. Okay, nag-overdose or yung mga long-term use uh, user of HRT po. Next is sleep disturbance. Sleep disturbance po is yung hindi po makatulog, lead, uh, resulting to insomnia po. Okay, again, it is because of the stress hormones, the increasing cortisol na nararanasan natin due to hormonal imbalance. Okay, sinabi ko nga, kapag mataas yung uh, cortisol mo sa katawan due to hormonal uh, changes po, kasi parang iting ng bubuhay ng katawan natin. So, since palagi tayong umiinom ng ng hormones, oh, syempre, mataas ang cortisol natin. Ito yung parang kapag may stress ka, ito yung nagpapagising sa'yo. Alert ka niya sa mga bagay-bagay na, na stressful sa'yo. Since nagtitake ka palagi ng HRT, oh, tapos increase palagi yung cortisol mo, so, nagiging alert palagi yung katawan mo. Kaya mahirap, nahihirapan, uh, matulog yung mga ibang sisi natin. Uh, sis. Okay? Which is mostly an accumulation of the fats po. Okay? That is one also of the complications of taking HRT. So guys, for any clarification, please feel free to approach me sa, uh, ano po, sa Facebook ko. Nandiyan po yung Facebook ko. So, and also, you can also join my trans group. Ito po. Ako po ang admin dyan. So, kung nagustuhan nyo po ang aking video, please uh, share, like, uh, and subscribe my YouTube video. So, thank you so much.